have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Marriage Meaningful. This is your host, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. Well, the Lord bless you, the Lord bless you, and the Lord bless you. We are so elated that the Lord has allowed us to join together 
once again on Making Marriage Meaningful. I am your host, Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., and I am excited about tonight, the conversation we shall have. I need you to get on your, uh, your, 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 your phone and tell somebody that Making Marriage Meaningful is currently on air. We are here on Elation Radio, and I promise you it will be worth your time. Please let me put this disclaimer out there. I do not claim to be a relationship expert. I do not claim to be a relationship expert. But God has blessed me through the relationships and marriages that I've been through. So ups and downs and failures and successes and things of that magnitude uh, that it has taught me some things to be helpful to someone who is currently in a marriage, who is engaged to be married, who has been divorced and yet considering remarriage. I promise you that the things that I will share will be a benefit to you. Now, let me put this other disclaimer out there. This podcast has a conversation that is absolutely real. There is nothing fictitious, nothing fake, nothing phony. It is all real. At the same time, it is raw. We do not sugarcoat. We are not trying to spare your feelings. We're going to give you the naked, ugly truth. Finally, it is relevant because we will share from the word of God. We will share from personal experiences. And I say we because God has blessed me with a panel of great men and women of God, uh, some who have been married for years, some who have been married and have been widowed, married and divorced, married a uh, time or two. Um, what, uh, whatever the case is, guaranteed what we have to share will be worth your while. So let me see tonight who's working with me tonight, and we're going to go from there. Uh, Let me see tonight if Bishop-elect Ernest E. Richard Jr. is here tonight. Okay, that's one down. Uh, Let me see. Apostle Vincent Smith. That's, That's two. All right. Let me see. Apostle Felicia, uh, Felicia E. Flight. Good evening. Here. You are here. Well, God bless you. I pray that all is well. All is well, sir. Oh, okay. And I need to talk to you because I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw something that said something about you said some yes or something of them. What's that all about? And did I'm engaged to be married. Yay! Well, congratulations. I hope this show helped. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Hey, by the way, is it your baby daddy? <laughs> That's for me to know and y'all to find out. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. That's why I went there. <laughs> well, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let me see. Let me see if uh, Brother Otis Gabriel is here tonight. Are you here, sir? All right. Well, let me see. Uh, Reverend Billy Gabriel is here tonight. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you. Yes, he is here. Uh, well, God bless you. Hoping all is well. Hoping all is well. Amen. Amen. Well, what about, let me see. Brother Chuck, are you here tonight? All right. Well, we say to God be the glory. Thank God for you, 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 and you. Grateful for those of you who are here, and uh, we're praying that the Lord will do something great tonight. Uh, Reverend uh, Billy Gabriel, would you be so kind as to open us up with a word of prayer, please? Absolutely. To God be the glory. Father, we come before you tonight with open hearts. We come thanking you first for your love, thanking you for your mercy, thanking you for your grace, your protection, and pro- and providence. And Father, we come tonight in the area of making marriages meaningful, that institution in which you established many years ago for the man and woman. 
And that's what, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to explore your word and the, <clears throat> excuse me, and to rely on your word and our guidance and make it a meaningful and worthwhile and inspiring and lovely. And as we come, Lord God, I pray, first of all, that you clear our hearts and our minds of anything that might obstruct the influence and the hearing of your word that it may be beneficial to us. Lord God, I pray that that's what's forgiven for all the things that we might have said or done or didn't do or did do that were contrary to your will. And for that, dear God, I ask that you clear in us a clear heart and a clear mind as we endeavor in our assigned subject tonight. This, Lord God, I pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, sir. Amen. Thanking God for that prayer. Amen. I wanted to make sure I was on mute so that there would be no noise in the background or anything, you know, disturbances. Amen. And that's what we're going to do from these, uh, for, I guess, from now on. When If we're not talking, we're going to place our phones on mute so that it doesn't, the, in, the noise in the background does not become an issue or create any feedback or anything like that. Amen. Um, so listen, I want to get you, I want to get back into the scripture and we're going to get back into this discussion because we want to look at something different tonight. All right. Second Samuel chapter 11, starting at verse one, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and Bes and besieged Reba, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David, and David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Verse 4 says, and David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. I want to stop there at verse number four. I made it clear that we're going to go through these things. I'm going to look at some things to help in our discussion. We've been talking from the thought process, help, I'm toxic. And we've been dealing with, if you will, uh, ignoring the signs. Many people are um, ignoring the signs of toxicity, and they are wondering why they get themselves into predicaments that are not healthy or beneficial. And these are things we want to avoid in marriage. So we've been dealing with this help. I'm toxic. And we have determined that toxic is behavior that adds negativity and upsetting to your life. It is upsetting to your life. Any toxic behavior, it adds negativity. In other words, it's one of those things that make you say, what have I gotten myself into and how do I get myself out? There are a lot of people who do that. They get themselves into a relationship, right, and it, and it seems like it's going okay, and then all of a sudden they start seeing things differently. They're like, wait a minute, how did I get into this? And more so, how do I get out? You know, and so that's how people end up getting divorced because they find themselves in a toxic relationship, a toxic marriage. And the truth is told that an individual can do bad by themselves. So as we've been talking on the wise of help, I'm toxic, we have discovered a few things that we can compare to a marital relationship that David did. 
We found out about his negligence when he should have been taking care of things. He was negligent, better yet absent, if we will, wasn't there like he should have been. Uh, therefore, uh, he, he, there was a, he, had, he had failed to take proper care in doing what he was supposed to do. There was no accountability or responsibility on his part because he had neglected what was necessary concerning this scenario. And that's one of the things that happens with people in marriage. People start neglecting their responsibilities to their marriage and in their marriage and for their marriage. And when you do that, you're putting your marriage in great jeopardy. Then we discovered uh, that his issue was he had an issue of achievement, uh, meaning that now he's now king. He thinks he can do what he wants. Because what he has accomplished something, even though it was, and the only reason the only reason he he got to be king is because the Lord had chosen him. And sometimes people in their marriage they think because they they are chosen for uh, a, 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 if you will a position and a promotion and whatnot, they think now all of a sudden that everything and everyone now has to be subject to them. That's very dangerous thinking. I've seen it happen with men. I've seen it happen with women. Now that you've got this position, you've got this raise, you've got this increase, now you don't think you need to do your part in your marriage anymore. That's very dangerous. Then we talked about restlessness, uh, being that is the inability to rest or relax. Uh, so, therefore, you suffer from anxiety or boredom, and we saw this he could he because he wasn 't uh, where he was supposed to be and he wasn 't doing what he was supposed to be doing all of a sudden now he 's restless he 's looking for something to do. Let me tell you something, and I want to help somebody. Your marriage always needs work, and you should always be looking to work on your marriage, not what somebody else 's marriage is dealing with, not what somebody else thinks about their marriage. no, you need to work on on your own. You need to work on your own. And you always have something that you can do better to make your marriage even better. Then we talked about uh, the lust, the lust that he had because of what he had seen. And that's what lust do. Lust makes you see something that ain't yours and make you start craving it and desiring it and going crazy and wild about it. And then all of a sudden you sit here saying, oh, wow, I, 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 I'm I, interested in that. And I'm interested in that. I can't tell you the amount of people who've already been married and then told somebody else, well, the Lord showed me that you're going to be my wife. You're going to be my husband. How the Lord going to show you that and you already married? That, that, that That's just some straight of lust. Come on. That's some straight up lust. God don't operate like that. One thing about God, God is a God of order. God does not deal in chaos, confusion, and mess. I'm just sorry to say it, but it's the absolute truth. Then we talked on last week about uh, being nosy, being nosy. That is uh, showing too much curiosity about other people's affairs and prying into something. And that's something that he was doing. Who is she? I want to know more about her, what she got going on, what, you know, what's happening in her life. You know, and you got people sitting there answering and answering because there are some people who entertain nosiness, right? But the same people who entertain nosiness, they are people who are not going to share their business with you. That's just a reality. So this is some things that were happening, and we have seen how they can be extremely toxic to the marriage. Tonight, when I look at verse number four, here's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about being possessive, and I want to talk about how toxic that is, being possessive and how toxic that is. And when I talk about being possessive, I'm talking about a desire to control or dominate, a desire to control or dominate. Has anyone ever seen someone in a marriage or in a relationship trying to be possessive? Can somebody answer that? You've seen where somebody in a relationship and a marriage has tried to be, they have tried their hardest to be possessive. She mine, he mine, don't talk to him, don't talk to her, they mine. You ever, anybody ever seen that? Well, that's very uh-huh. common. In my case, that's very common. All to have there have been men 
who who were not really taught the real issues of marriage or things of strange. It could be because of home upbringing. But once they get married, they put a a claim on his wife as mine. That part is true. They are the, they are married, but at this time, he he takes it to another level, uh, such as property or a, an item, or a, rather than another person that completes him, and he has this absolute total control as to what he tried to implement it, what she could wear, not to wear. What to do, what not to do, who to associate with, and who not to associate with, and all those little negative areas are dominant and possessiveness. And all too often, because I love him, a lot of women succumb to that or, or give in to that. Why you do it? Oh, because I love him. That, that, that even though it's a, in my, in my view. Is a sign of abuse, really. But there are all too often that I have seen the women take that position, and that goes back to something we have studied much, much earlier in our discussion. And, and, and as far as when you first meet another person, that they should, in their courtship or their dating, that these these signals are red. A red flag, a green flag, whatever it might be, should be obvious and evident of what you are going to, that you're getting into before you decide to say I do. That, as far as I can go, we are going at this point because yes, that is a common thing, uh, that possessiveness. As this doctor, Ernest say, I've dropped the mic. Well, anyone else? Um, yes, my comment on that is it's territorial. I I don't I don't know if it causes harm or or brings any good, but um, in a sense, um, when a man says that that's my wife, he's just being territorial. He's being the protector that he is. When a woman says that's my husband. Again, she's being territorial. She's protecting her husband's not only his reputation. She's rep- she's protecting his character, his integrity. That I don't look at it as a negative thing. Controlling, yes, but I don't think the, some some territorial um, 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 marks are controlling. Yes, but you have to know it from the beginning. You know, you saw the warning signs and you still kept going. So territorial, I'll call it territorial versus controlling. And we have to now, know the difference. I, I'm, I'm listening to you because I want to follow you, Apostle Flight. You're saying that it's one thing. You're saying that it's okay to be territorial. Is that what I'm hearing mm-hmm. you say? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, but but okay. But let's look at this then from from this perspective, because I want you to I want you to follow me. The Bible says that David sent messengers. And took her. He just found out that she's married. But because of his position, he sent messengers and took her. As if he can have anything he wants, anyone he wants, simply because of his position. Uh So now, I ask you again, is that being territorial, or is that being possessive? That was being possessive because he used his power. He used his oh. power to get what he wanted. Okay, so that so this is I want you to stay right there in that vein. I want you to stay right there in that vein because a lot of people, because they're married, they'll use their power. Watch this. They'll use their power, and they'll do it this way. Mm-hmm. If uh, if okay. you don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to take everything and leave you with nothing. Is that mm-hmm. not using power? 
I, I yes, mean, yes. you know, you know, for instance, like, let me, let me give you, let me set it up for you. Cause I want you to answer. So like, for instance, let's say, let's say that I'm married, right. To a woman who claims, Hey, I'm the one who got the car. I'm the one who got the house. It's all in my name. And if you don't this and you don't that, well, then you don't conform to what I want. Well, then either I'll put you out or I'll take everything and leave you stranded. Is that not possessive? Yes, and territorial and manipulative. And um, I'm going to use the other word because I don't want the people to think something wrong with me. But absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's in the wrong, that, that she's using her power in the wrong way. Because we all heard of so, power, but the power mm-hmm. is in a so now, watch what? Watch, watch, because something is. Watch this. Watch this. Because there's something that I want to. I want you to pay attention to, right? Because he sends for her. He sent messengers and took her. So it didn't make a difference if she really didn't want to. Because of, like you said, his position and his power, he made use of that. All right. And the Bible says she came in unto him. In other words, she knew what to expect because of who he was. And the Bible said he lay with her. Now, here's what gets me. He, he, had, he had to look, been paying attention to her. He had to be paying attention because, watch, she was washing herself for the Bible says, that she was purified from her uncleanness. Well, so wouldn't that mean that she was just finish, finishing her cycle? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Oh. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. Cause I, so, so, so all of the time, he's like, you know what? I'm going to get that because I'm the king and I can't. Better yet, he didn't just say, I'm going to get that. His mindset is, I'm going to hit that. Oh, my. So, so now let's think about that. How many people in their relationship, that's what they do because they have something on somebody. They know something on somebody. So they use that and hold it over their head. Yo, I'm going to get that or I'm going to tell your secret. I'm going to take, is that not being possessive? Is that not controlling? That's a form of witchcraft. <laughs> but, uh, see, when you talk about uh, David, that's not a, I, I don't see where that's possessive. That's a, that's a power uh, act. But, but you, so there are so many other men, I wish I had a list, uh, of that um, fell in those categories with men. I mean, with the women, and and I, and I feel that the lust of that the eyes. It see that David, well, I I I, I would say a hundred, I say ninety eight or uh, ninety nine men in any case, be be he was a, be the, if he was a king or the general, if he saw what he saw uh, uh, with this woman, bathing. The average man, the way we are wired, we are created that way, and that's why they, we are so different. The average man, if, if, if whether he thought he could or not, will say, all for her, whistle for her, who is for, who is she? And I like to say, I don't have to do with her. And I, he, I will either call or, I, or either send one of my friends that say, Billy Ray wants to see you, and she might say, for what? That once she get rid of, she'll come to see what I want. Then I would do what, like what we used to call, do my little rap thing, rap it or sweet talking. And as, as we also say, one thing will lead to the other. But with him being the king, his position was, what? is she going to say, no, I'm not coming, but I don't really believe uh, no, I ain't coming. I ain't gonna do that. But it's just, oh no, it's just two different 
streets all together. Um, but the average man, if he see a naked woman, or even a half naked woman, or even want to tag dress, they would have that same idea in his head. I don't care how you see it. I don't care how spiritual he might be. I hope it. he would take a lot of restraint to hold your your desire. And that's that's from my point of view. From my from my Um, um, so here, here's my question. Here's my question. Okay. If you're in a position of power, what is the purpose of power? To control, to dominate, right? Not necessarily so. Uh, like, yeah. Correct. No. That's, 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 that that's is true. Power is. That's what power is. That's exactly. Power Definitely. is designed to be in control. Power is designed to dominate. Matter of fact, the very first relationship God gave man was rulership, the ability to dominate or to have dominion. Come on here, Genesis 3, 14. Let's, let's, right. let's talk that's about right. it. So, so, so when, so, so if you go back, if you go back to Genesis the first chapter and look at verse twenty six, God says, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have, let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beasts of the field, the earth, everything that creepeth upon it." That's so. So the purpose of dominion is to control. To dominate. So he's in a position now. That's why you can't give everybody a position. Because as soon as they get their position, it goes through their head. Now they want to dominate this. Now they want to dominate that. Now they want to rule here. They want to rule there. They want to control this. They want to control that. And so that, so this is something that happens in a person's life. Let me go this way. Let me say it this way before anybody say anything else. So uh, a man... A man gets with this woman, right? I was watching a movie the other day, uh, and the man, uh, he was talking to this woman, right? And all of a sudden, you know, they started, he started saying all the lines, and he got into her system, got into her head. And I saw something in the scripture today. I'm going to say it, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying it, but I'm going to say it in just a minute. Anyway, this man got into this young lady's head. All of a sudden, now he's, now they move in together. Right now, she want to go see her family. No, I want you to spend time with me. All of a sudden, you know, she's already with him. She lives with him. Now he wants he wants her to spend time with him. He don't want her to see her family. Now he wants a baby. Now he don't want the baby to go spend the night anywhere. What he's doing is he's becoming possessive. Right? He's becoming possessive. Uh, because he's afraid that if she walks away, you know, that she may not come back. Why? Because she sees the things behind the scenes. And this is something that has happened with a lot of people. Now, what I wanted to say earlier, and I all the time I have read this scripture, I have never paid it attention until today. The Bible says that the woman had a conversation with the serpent. And the Bible makes it clear that the woman was deceived, which says that it is that a woman is easily gullible. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. It, the, the 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 woman was gullible because she fell for what the serpent was saying, and that's what happens. That messes up a lot of women. They hear something and they become gullible. And they become prey to it. Oh, I just messed up. I know I did. Y'all just got to pray no, for me, but I'm not going to know. That is so true. We do. A lot of women, and I'm a woman, I'm full grown, we fall for the okie doke. We become gullible, we become vulnerable. And then when it's not time to be vulnerable, we're vulnerable. When it is time, we're not. So either way it goes, no, you're right on it now. Um, because anybody who has that much mind control over you, that's witchcraft. 
That's the spirit of manipulation. And we ain't binding nothing to us like that. If anything, we're casting it down. So you got to be mindful and careful about it. Be, be mindful and careful, you know, that you don't fall, that you don't get connected to somebody who's going to uh, control you and manipulate you. And, and, and how it happens is, you know, you, you begin to, they get, a man or a woman get with you and they start, you know, they're doing all the things that you like. It's a narcissist. She got all of them, he and she got all of different spirits connected. Witchcraft. Hey, I, I, I that's what I said. When you say witchcraft, that's kind of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. Um, that's a, may I if you look interject up, if you look up here? Manipulation is witchcraft. That's mind control. That's witch. That's the spirit of witchcraft. So, you, so you got a weed. May, 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 may I interject here, witchcraft? please? All right. Uh, is that Bishop is it, is Elect Richard? Possible? Yes, it is electric. You God said, bless you. Terrible. God bless you. Welcome. Bless Welcome. You, sir. Um, I've been. Listening you've been listening. For the last for the last 15, 20 minutes, I've been listening, just kind of sitting back and listening. Uh, you talked about the difference between dominance and dominion. Dominion is not dominating, and dominating isn't even dominion. One is controlling, while the other guides. When it's dominion, it's a guide. When it's dominance, you're pushing somebody to do something possibly against their will. And the difference in that is simply this. When we uh, look at what God has given us, according to Genesis, like you already said, he gave us the ability to guide. In other words, we see the animal kingdom today. I'm talking about us in this 21st century, aggressive and territorial and vicious and things of that nature. And it was not like that before the fall. We could tell the lion to go lay down. We could tell the hippopotamus to go get back in the water, and they obeyed. But when sin stepped in, dominion evaporated, and now dominance was established because now the lion has no more desire to listen to you. Who are you? You are no longer in control. We were given control of this world, but we sold it off to Satan. And so now the animal kingdom, I'm just talking about the animal kingdom, Creation in and of itself is no longer subject to man. Now when we come back into Christ, there is a level of subjection. But now that is where dominion is now real. In terms of a relationship between a man and a woman, a man who dominates is a man who is trying to control. And he will do it by any means necessary. He will either boo you down, lower your self-esteem, or physically excuse me, physically try to beat you into submission. A man of dominance is a man who understands his security, who he is, and what he stands for, and he will guide you to where you need to be. He doesn't have to get physical. I dropped the mic. Hey, man. Uh, Apostle Flack, you want to respond to that? No, sir. I think you you said something very profound, uh, Bishop Elect, when you said uh, that the dominance uh, or dominion is about guidance, and dominance is about more control. And so here's the thing: so what David did it was dominance. It was no dominion in that. He had his no, domain. Not at all. He was. But he had a plan. It was complete yes, dominance. I agree. When when he and, sent when he sent for her, that was mm-hmm. because what he wanted to be possessive. He wanted to say, exactly. "This is my land, so therefore I can do what I want with my land. I can do to, I can do what I want with whom is in my land." And this is the thing that happens in relationships, in marriages. You're in my house, so in my house, I'll talk to you how I want to talk to you. I'll touch you the way I want to touch you. I'll do handle you the way I want to handle you. And then we wonder why there's always tension in the house because of what? One seeking to be progressive. And when it comes from the when it comes from the aspect of a woman, it's more about being a man being emasculated. 
Because mm, I what agree. She, what she, what she's trying to do is she's trying she's trying to dominate him because she's trying to show, well, hey, I make the most money. So as what I say, that goes. And that should never well, be the case. But that's what we can see. I, can I share something with you? I hear and I agree with 95% of what you said. The other 5% is still left out to lunch. It's not an argument. It's a moot point, so we're going to leave it where it is. But you're right. David, because of his position, sent for, and keep in mind, this is before Uriah was mad, was murdered, and that's what he was, murdered. And I said this earlier today uh, during our men's session, and that same subject came up about David and Bathsheba. Keep in mind, David was still married to Michelle, or Michelle, however you say that woman's name. He was still married to her. He just put her away or put her to the side. She became of no use to him because when he danced, bring him back the ark. You guys know the story. Now, here's what I want to look at, though, because his dominance uh, was not necessarily he, – he didn't go to Bathsheba and say, you come here. The king is sending for you. Is his, his, it was subtle, but it was still dominance. Yes, I do agree with you. And when he calls her, and you already said it earlier, I heard you, she was cleaning herself, purifying herself according to the law because she's just coming off her period. This only shows you how powerful lust can be when left to itself to fester because he's looking over the roof, sees that and says, O-M-G. He's checking out that 36, 24, 36. I don't know how keen his eyesight was. I don't know if he sees a little forest between her legs or he's just catching a hold of them breaths as they're bouncing up and down, all glittery with water. I'm sorry for the imagination, fellas. And please excuse me, Apostle Flight, no disrespect intended. But you got to get in the mindset of a man to know what it is that drove him to decide to call for her. His lust is what called for her. And so in that respect, dominance now steps in because there's no dominion there like you already said, Apostle. I want to drop the mic again, sir. <laughs> well, so so then my question becomes this. So would you say that lust is powerful enough to make one possessive? Yes. Anybody. Anybody. Well, yes. I, I, yes. Thing because the, in verse two it says when he saw her, well that once again the Bible describes her. She was very beautiful, mm-hmm. attracted to the eye. As I as I said much earlier, on an average, like now this summer, during the summertime, where the women are dressing the way they do. And people are having accidents on the highway looking at them. They are beautiful and it's attractive. And I said much earlier, we are wired in that position. And all too often, we might stop the car or anyway, and we'll start talking <laughs> all this part of persuasion, not power. I promise to her these things. I'll buy you a car. I'll buy you a ring. I'll buy you a dress. What, the art of persuasion. Oh. And all too often, if she's gullible or in a position of a loneliness, I, I, I know what you said about the king, but they, 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 as they were just saying that being gullible. And this, this is on another on another plane. I, 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 I'm, I'm not a king. I am not, uh, I'm just saying, uh, in, a, in a sense, just anybody. I don't have the position of, of uh, prominence, but a nine times out of ten, I, and I hate to put it in this way, in the pulpit. Oh, no, no, let me stay away from the pulpit. The person who. No, go to the pulpit. Go to the pulpit, because that's where a lot of trouble begins on most occasions. Go to it. Don't stay and, away. So, and uh, the, the, the women. Uh, attracted to people in position. I was in the army mm-hmm. for 21 years, and I know women I like to the uniform. And all too often, they gravitate to that position, 
And if I have any nerve or something, what we used to call any rap or any game, I can say anything I want to to them, and if they are gullible and depend on their attitude, yes, you can go to Marbella's Hotel. And for one night stand or a five minute stand, what do you want to call it? That's a, a persuasion, not power, just persuasion. If one of them had the sweetest talk and flash talking, he like what Reverend you Gabriel, can I? Can I interrupt you for a minute? Because when you talk about persuasion, you're actually talking about power. Okay. There's power in persuasion. Think about it. Yeah. Oh, and see, you said uh, a woman on the street, and you see her, and you just about wreck your car looking at her because everything is just about hanging out from every side. Go to social media. Man, how many times I've turned on, went to go look at TikTok just to go post something or say something, and the very first thing that pops up on my on my camera, on my telephone, some chick in a bikini, she's got that little small, pinky little small triangular uh, top on where her areola is the only thing that's covered, and she's bulging over the top. She's got uh she doesn't have much of a fob but enough, but then you see her pocket sitting right there, practically standing up. I mean, come on, the power of persuasion. Now I got two choices. I could stand there and gawk at her for God knows how long. It's my phone, stay as long as I want, or I have the choice of moving away from that. And see, at my little young tender age of 64, I'm moving away from it because of the simple fact that been there, done that, okay? Now, please, again, ladies, all the women that are on here, please don't think I'm being disrespectful. But I've got to talk raw talk, and with your permission, Apostle Whitlow, I want to say I've seen enough pussy in my lifetime that what you got ain't going to persuade me no kind of way. That's earnest one and one. So let me move on. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. But but here's the thing. What we're trying to do is we're trying to solve the problem of toxicity mm-hmm. when it comes to being possessive. Yes. He's being possessive yes. of her. She's being possessive of him. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to be proud of having your spouse I'm not saying that you're not supposed to be able to brag about how blessed you are. I'm not saying that. But to go as far as what David did, uh, mm-hmm. as far uh, uh, you know, as as far as as far as going as he did. So notice what he says. Uh, the the king the, David sent messengers and took her. That got my attention. Mm. He sent messages. Not, not. He didn't. He didn't even. Wait, 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 wait. He didn't even let them just say the king would like to see see you. That would have been one thing. No, he made it as look. I'm gonna get you to me, and I'm gonna get you into my quarters. Now here's the thing. Then when she came, she came in unto him, into his presence. That is, and the Bible said he lay with her. So apparently. She must have felt some kind of way that if she didn't, that she was probably going to be in trouble. Ooh, you know what, Apostle? You just popped something in my head just now. Oh, Lord, you know not how, popping. Oh, Lord. Yeah, popping. You know how, all right, imagine this, and maybe everybody isn't starstruck. Uh, I know I'm not one of those who was starstruck. I mean, I've had conversations with some superstars in gospel. I had to tell one of them on, on an occasion, you eat, sleep, drink, poop, and pee just like I do. Relax yourself. You just got a name because people like me produced your music or actually play your music over the airways. But to that individual that is starstruck, seeing their idol, their icon, that individual that first for the first time, and now they have this one-on-one and this opportunity to be with them, I might to a small degree put Bathsheba in that category. Yes, her husband is serving in the army, but now – The king, the person who rules the land, the most powerful man in the entire nation is calling for me. So let me go over there. Could she have possibly been starstruck in that facet? And then he turns 
and starts laying it on thick about how beautiful she is and, you know, this, that, and the other, possibly stroking the side of her neck and maybe running his hand down the middle of her body. And she tingled and does one of those numbers. And then the next thing you know, he maybe inadvertently just slide down there and get a handful of crotch. I don't know how he did it. I'm just throwing this out there, okay? Is it possible she could have been starstruck? And in the okay. midst of her start being starstruck, she okay, just submitted. Me, okay, let me put it, put it this way. I said this last week. She living next to the king. I, I'm sure she knew where he lived. Who's to say that her taking her bath on top of that roof, that she not entice him? For whatever yeah, that's purpose, a possibility. Whatever her purpose was, and, he, and it played right out. And he saw her, and he sent for her. That's what I was going to say. It, it, could, it, it didn't say that biblically, but it, it's a likelihood she, she, she knew who he was and she knew where she lived. And she knew that she'd take a bath up there where he might be up there to see her when he came on the roof or not. He could see her from the window. That just might that uh, just I, something I brought up. I I admit. No, no, no. I won't rule that out. I'm not going to rule that out, but I'm going to simply say that if she's purifying herself, I'm not in a woman's mind, and only the ladies can answer this for me. When a woman is cleaning and cleansing herself, the last thing she wants is for any man to be peeking at her. You follow what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, and I mean, I had been married before, and my second wife was when her period came, she didn't want me in the bathroom. I'm just going out, you know, this is experience talking. She, when her period came, she didn't even want me in the bathroom. No, you got to get out. Or I got to take care of some business. <laughs> what kind of business you got to take care of that I haven't seen? You know, and I could get vulgar and very detailed, but let's, you guys use your imagination. When she's trying to take care of that last bit of emission from her body fluids, she doesn't want a man around her. So for that reason, as a, if I were a defense attorney, I would turn around and say Bathsheba was not trying to entice David. She was simply going about her daily routine. Now, well, if I'm a prosecutor, well, if I'm a prosecutor, let, I'm going to go ahead. Let me let me let me let me let me let me pump the brakes right there. Let me pump the brakes right there. Because Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, while I agree that a woman who is on her cycle doesn't want to be looked at, doesn't want to be touched, doesn't want to be bothered, at the same time, it, it has come to my understanding that that is a time that uh, a lot of women are even much, much hornier yes. than yes. any other yes. time. But, yes. but, but, but the yes. thing is, but my thing is, that this wouldn't have been an issue if David was where he was supposed to be in the first place. I agree. I agree. If, if David, I agree. If David was out, if David was handling his business, right, mm -hmm. this wouldn't have been an issue. Watch this. If he put as much effort into the present wife he had rather than trying to get another lay, it wouldn't have been an issue. But this is what I'm getting at. This is where I need you to see it. This is what a lot of people do. They become so possessive. So, for instance, let me show, let me go this way. So a man has a wife already, right? But mm -hmm. now he walks into the, he walks into the gas station uh, to pay for his gas, and here comes this little foxy mama, as they would say. All of a sudden, oh, who, what your name is? Right? Oh, then need then has the need to get her telephone number. What you need her telephone number for? Then when you call her, you know, uh, can we get together? What you need to get together for? Because it's about being possessive. Because why? It's about trying to prove something. What it is, I don't know. Is it trying to prove that you're a stallion, that you're a hunk, that you're the man, or you trying to prove that you're the woman, that you got it all together, and that you was whatever? You know, I don't know, but I do know that there are a lot of people who are doing these things, and there's a lot of folk in a lot of marriages that are suffering from such actions as being possessive. Why? Because you're trying to control everything. You're trying not only 
trying to control everything. You're trying to dominate everything. There's no dominion. And so then when we hear men talk about what the Bible says, submit, submit, submit. Well, here's the reality about the word submit. It's really short for, um, you know, for a, a, a mutual submission yes. to get the mission yes. done. It is about exactly. mutual. So, so, in other words, this is exactly. what I mean by that. This is what this is what I mean by that, right? There are certain things that I would expect my wife to do, but yet there would be certain things that she would expect me to do. For instance, yes. she might expect she she's probably going to expect me to take out the trash on a point mm-hmm. blank period, right? And mm-hmm. so, who am I to say, oh no, you're supposed to submit to me, so you take out the trash? Why would I? Why would a man see that? That's what I'm saying. This is the stuff that has well, got people messed up because. People People, they take a word, run with it, and go in a direction they should not go. Do I make well, any sense? Well, can I throw something at you? Yes, you do, mm-hmm. because I'm actually, uh, with the church, I'm, I'm teaching a series now, Guidelines to uh, Family Survival. And I'm on that subject of mutual submission out of Ephesians 5.21. And what you just said is pretty much what I'm sharing with them. This is not a do as I say do effort. This is a team effort. You and I have to work together to make sure that the team functions properly. The husband, though he is the prophet, priest, and king, should also recognize the very fact that he has a partner who is his wife who was called alongside to help him manage. It didn't say you dominate the wife. It says you and the wife together have dominion. You are the one guiding, but she's right alongside you assisting in the guidance. The children will either grow up to be, have a level of success or have a a huge level of failure based upon how you guide them. You know, first and foremost, I said this in service just last Sunday. Some children did not ask to come into this world. Y'all decided that you were so hot for each other. You were married, but you were hot for each other. And so you started plugging up and swinging from the chandelier and everything else. Next thing you know, children come. Now, is it that child's fault that they came? No. Is it your fault? It's not about whose fault it is. It's now there's a responsibility. And in mutual submission, together you do what's needed and necessary for the welfare of that child. And that doesn't just include the husband and wife. That includes the village that's going to be present to help raise that child. There is a submission that has to take place. I I think, and, and, I, and I want to hear this uh, from I want to hear from Apostle Flyth, um that why is it that some people who operate from this mindset of being possessive become violent? Mm-mm. Can you talk to me, Apostle Flyth, on that? Apostle Flyth, are you still with us? I'm here. Okay, so do you did you get my question? Yeah, why do people that possessive become so violent? Yes, can you talk to me about that, please? Um, I think it's more of they don't have self control. Number one, number two, they're not used to rejection, or they've had rejection so long that now it's 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 becoming an issue for them because they can't control it. First of all. Boys are that way, not men. And I told mm-hmm. I definitely. I agree. I agree. No. A no, boy no. is a bird. A man meets all needs. So mm-hmm. if you can control your anger, then you're still a boy. And mm-hmm. there are times where one person can become flipped um, out of frustration. But to become violent and frustration are two different things. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I act out of out of frustration, but violence, no. Uh-uh. And people again do that because of the fact that it's a lack of self control. A man should never, ever lose control, and when he becomes violent with a woman. That's you know, that's unexcusable. I agree. 
So um, to answer your question, it's because of a lack of self self control, because they they weren't taught to um, rationalize their feelings. They weren't taught to express their feelings um, without um, hand movement, gun movement, knife movement, whatever. And that's 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 what it boils down to. Because if a man tells a woman no. It takes to them. It takes away their man. It hurts their pride. Mm. It hurts their ego. Wow. So wow. Testosterone under control because that's all it is. You're trying to prove a point, and the point that you're trying to prove by you being so masculine or, or you being so violent causes you two places to either go to hell or jail, and the choice is ultimately yours. I'm done. Okay. Wow. There, there's so much that you just shared in that that I'm like sitting here literally like wow. So, so people who are possessive, is it possible that they 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 become possessive and they they become violent because it's making up for the area in where they lack? Yes. Okay, because yes. I was thinking about yes. I was thinking about Medea Family Reunion. I know that I know mm-hmm. most of you have seen it. Tyler Perry's Medea Family Reunion and and yeah. um Blair Underwood played he was his yeah. fiance, he was this great great um, uh bank guy and whatever and he was he had this beautiful woman and he was beating on her. He was mm-hmm. why didn't you have your phone? I've been calling you and why don't you do this and fix yourself up so possessive that he began beating on her and abusing her, right? So to the point that her mother said, you know, I've heard of men like you. They they throw temper tantrums and they become abusive because they realize that they come up short in some other areas. Yes. Mhm. Insecurity is the biggest one. Okay. I mean, there, the truth of the matter is, when you look at that show, think about it. He he he. You could see crystal clear high levels of insecurity. He wants this quote unquote perfect woman and if she isn't perfect by his standards, he feels like he got less than what he was supposed to get. Now that makes him angry because his perfection as a man is now emasculated in his eyes. Mm. Sometimes there's a lack of confidence in yes. in trusting the yes. love that they have. I agree. Uh, and, and that so so again, these are things that are current issues in a lot of people's lives. I'm saying that because there is some woman right now who's dealing with domestic abuse because mm-hmm. of what he is doing to her. At the same time, there is some man who's intimidated by the possessiveness of his wife. Because uh-huh. of all of the constant threats she throw out. What I'm saying is that po- to be possessive is toxic. You've got to be grateful for the reality that God gave you somebody who's willing to love you, who's willing to deal with you, who's willing to put up with you, who's willing to tolerate you, and at times celebrate you. Someone who's willing to say, yes, I take this, I took this man, not because I thought I could change him, but because I saw something great in him and I wanted to see him develop and evolve. Vice versa. Uh, I, I got to share something with you by way of testimony. Uh, now, okay. many of you know my possession and what I do as an entrepreneur. And I'm not ashamed to say this because the relationship that my wife and I have is beyond what most people even really understand. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, my wife makes more money than I do, okay? A few thousand dollars more, quite a few thousand dollars more if you really want to get down to it than I do, okay? But at the same time, she recognizes my headship as the head of this house. My responsibility now is not to become jealous, to become insecure, to become dominant, or any of that. My job right here and now is to be 
the prophet, priest, and king of my house, the lead guide guard to govern and to protect as the head of this house. Money has its place, and then the actual function of the family has another place. And men get it confused sometimes. Just because your wife makes more money than you, brothers, don't fall apart. You thank God that she makes the money that she makes. First and foremost, she took the time and spent her seven-plus years in school in the financial districts. So that puts her in a position to be able to do what she do. The difference between her and I, and I'm going to stop right here and move to my point. The difference between her and I is I went into business almost immediately after school because the first semester of college, I just left. Because I could, at the time, a tractor-trailer driver during that time made between 1500 to $2,000 a week. And we're back in 1981-82, okay? I left school back in 78, 79, and started working with my father. So, yeah, I was making money then, but since then, the tables have turned. People who are in the financial industry are making anywhere in excess as little as 125000 to as much as $300,000 a year, okay? So the basics is this, and what I'm trying to do to get to my point is this. Do I need to be dominant? No. Because I have a wife who understands scripture. We both understand Ephesians 5.21. We understand God's order. And here's where a lot of men mess up. When you want God's order, God never told you to dominate your wife at any point in time. She's not your rug. She's not your floor. She's not the grass under your feet. She is not your carpet. She's not your whipping post. She's not your verbal assault box or none of that. She is the part of you, physically speaking, that you lack. What you are missing, she possesses, and the two of you together become that dominant force. Remember the, the movie Soul Food where Mama stood there and, and had her hands open, and she says, apart, these fingers can do nothing. But when you bring them all together, they make a powerful fist. And this is the relationship that most men and women, to get away from toxicity, toxicity, Boy, I'm having trouble with that word again. Toxicity is basically to not allow yourself to be separated. That's why the scripture says neither give place to the devil. Toxicity sets in when you start submitting yourself to the will of the devil as opposed to the will of God. When you do it God's way, you can't help but succeed. But when you do it the devil's way, look for certain disaster because it's going to happen like an unannounced tornado. You're going to tear your house up from the floor. I dropped the mic. Here's the thing, and, I, you know, this has been a really good conversation, but, again, I don't want people to miss this. I need, I need that woman who's, who's considering marrying that dude who proposed to you. I need you not to ignore the signs. If he's possessed Amen. right now, if he's possessive right now, he's not going to get better just because you said I do. What he's going to do is he's going to take more advantage of you. I'm talking to that young man. I'm talking to that man who's really into that young lady because she got it going on. Every time she walks, her, back, her backside talks. I can understand it. I can understand it. But you got to pay attention to the signs. If you see toxicity, you need to mind that it is not benefiting you. Once again, to be toxic means behavior that adds negativity, and it's upsetting to your life. So if you're upset, it's because you're unhappy, because you're in an unhealthy situation. This is not what God wants for you. God does not want you to be possessed or controlled or dominated by anyone. Because chances are, when you're dominated, there is no negotiating. When you're dominated, there is no uh, there is no compromise. When you're dominated, it's all about that individual and how that ind individual can benefit for themselves from you. That's not what God designed. When God designed the marriage, 
God designed the mutual happiness of each other. God designed the development of each other. God designed the procreation from that union. And if that's something mm-hmm. that is not being, uh, if, that's, if that's something that's not taking place, then I want to say to you, ma'am, sir, you're not in the right relationship. If you're in a marriage like that right now, I urge you, please get counseling. I urge you, please, don't, don't find yourself being miserable. Don't find yourself being unhappy. Don't find yourself in a place of depression where it leads you to committing suicide. Don't find yourself in a position where it stresses you so much that it's causing your pressure to go up. Please, this is not healthy, and it is not conducive for a move of God in your life. I don't know who I've been talking to tonight. I'm not out of time. I'm just simply out of talk for tonight. This is making marriage meaningful. And I say it every week. Your marriage will not be meaningful. Uh, uh, your, marriage is, your marriage will be meaningless until your mate becomes meaningful. Meaning that if you do not respect your mate, if you do not honor your mate, if you do not appreciate the gift that God gave you in your mate, then you're not going to appreciate a marriage that could have been designed in heaven. That's what I'm saying. You don't want to deal with these things. You don't want to deal with negligence, that achievement that makes you think you're all that, that restlessness, that lust, that nosiness. And certainly you don't want to deal with someone who is possessive. That's not healthy. Again, we're dealing with this help. I'm toxic. We want to help you to get free of your toxicity because we want you to live the best life and have the best marriage possible. It's that simple. All right. So, listen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I want you to join us next week, uh, next week, uh, Saturday night, uh, for Making Marriage Meaningful. Uh, there's going to be some more talk, some more discussion, and God is going to share some things with us to help us along the way in Jesus' name. All right, I pray that you have an amazing week. All right, listen, Father's Day is coming up. Listen, get something good for your for your father. If he's still alive, get something nice, and not just a tie, not just a tool. Get him something nice like you do for your mama. Get him something nice, too. Get him something nice. All right, I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> listen, thanks to all of you who joined in tonight. Appreciate you all. Looking for you next time. Y'all have an amazing day tomorrow in worship, and we'll look forward to next time. All right? We say the Lord go with you and keep you. Is our prayer. Go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. Dr. Kimmy, we're praying for you. We want you to come on and join in with us. All right? And uh, and I need you to do me a favor and drop that track. Everybody else, we say good night, good night, shalom, shalom. <laughs>